Hey guys, my name is Lisa and I am a foster mom of three and I make weekly videos about foster care. Uh, one subscriber recently asked to make this video and so I'm excited to bring it to you. Um, if there are any other topics that you want me to discuss, leave it below in the comments. All right, so let's get started. How many people are involved in a foster child's life? So this is an example of the people that a foster child could um, interact with on a regular basis. So this first circle here is, are people that they interact with daily or weekly, more regularly. Um, this next circle are people that they deal with occasionally. And then I'm gonna put people out here that they actually never see or interact with, but still um, directly play a role in their life. All right, so just like any other child you're gonna have um you know things like teacher and friends now the thing that's different for a foster child is it's very possible that when they are removed from their family and they go to a foster family or they go to even a group home setting that they may have to switch schools they may have to then get a different friend group and so this can be all new um, for a foster child uh, and then um, with teacher, you know, you have bus driver, teacher aides, like all like the school people. All right, so friends, and then you have birth parents, foster parents, or I guess I should say, you know, parent, because every situation is different, the foster child um, siblings. And then it's very possible, it's not the case in our home, but in another foster family's home, it's possible that there are um, other kids um, in the house. And then also you got visit supervisor and visits vary based on the age of the foster child and also based on kind of where the case is at. Um, our children currently have visit twice a week, but sometimes if a child is young, like a baby, sometimes I've heard of visits even like six times per week and um, three times per week just to keep that bond strong when a child is so young just so they can remember um, their birth family. Or this could be a less often if the child is older, whatever's kind of going on or the distance between where that foster family is and where that birth family is. I have heard it before where um, a family have like visit like once a week on a Saturday, but it's like a longer visit because there is like two hours between where the foster family is and where the birth family is. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put therapists here. Now this is not um, for every foster child, but you know, there can be um, behavioral therapists. There can be a life coach. I these people that they interact with on a regular basis. Now let's go to the second layer. Um, you got, you know, doctors and dentists. And again, you might be wondering why I'm putting this here. Of course, it's like every child, but again, they might have to change and so, it may not be someone that they are used to working with. So just, again, a different face um, for that child in care. And then for the birth parents, then you have, you know, the extended birth family. And I do know there are situations where a foster child may even have visits with a grandparent or something like that. I said birth family, oh. Oops, I was talking, got distracted, not parents. My husband asked me if I needed to buy two of these in case I made a mistake, and I was like, no, but there you go. Well, extended birth family. Um, and then same with foster parents, you got the extended foster family as well. So siblings, now it's possible that the foster child is not living with their siblings. And in that case, they actually have visits with their siblings. So then you have the families of your siblings that the child is with or families depending on how big the sibling group is and it's possible for that that there would be even another visit supervisor that might pick the foster child up to take him to that visit a lot of times it seems like um, foster parents are kind of the ones responsible for making sure those visits happen and that connection happens um, with the siblings to keep that bond strong okay all right, then you have um, the caseworker. This is the family case manager or FCM. Um, that is the person that is working with the whole family um, to help reunification. At a minimum, the foster child sees the caseworker once a month when the caseworker just comes to check up and see how everything is going. Now, not every case has this, but some cases have a CASA or a GAL. That is a court 
appointed special advocate, or the guardian ad litem. I mean, or is it litem? Litem. We obviously don't have a gal, so I don't really know how to say it. So the role of this person is to be the voice of a child um, in court. And in a court situation, at least in the state of Indiana, um, foster parents also have the right to um, show up to court and also be heard. Um, I know that is not the case for every state, so I'm very thankful um, that Indiana does allow foster parents to speak on behalf of the kids and kind of what they've been seeing. Um, but the CASA is so invaluable on the, the gal as well. Okay, and then I'm gonna put here, kids attorney. Now, this is actually not something that Indiana has yet. There's currently legislation to have an attorney um, for the child. Again, that becomes just that second step. You'd have a CASA probably as well and to have attorney. So we read an article that said that other states that have already implemented um, kids attorneys, the time for a foster child um, to be in care is cut in half. Um, so that means that the case just goes half the amount of time to really help the child get permanency faster. And so currently in the state of Indiana, the average foster care case is four years, four years. Yeah, um, that's, that's, a, that's just way too long to be in limbo. I mean, think about it. Think about the times in your life when you've been in limbo. Maybe right after college, you know, waiting for a job or you're about to move and you're not sure like what's gonna happen when you move. Okay, think about those times and how uncertain you feel. Now imagine four years of that, it's ridiculous. That's my little <laughs> tangent there, but cutting the time in half to two years um, is so much better. So um, I'd be really curious. Please let me know in the comments if your state, and let me know what state you're from, um, has an attorney uh, for kids. Really hoping that that um, happens for Indiana as well. Now, the next layer I'm gonna put is for any child that is under 14, of people that they never interact with but have a say in their life. Um, now, if this child is over the age of 14, anyone that I'm gonna put on the outside layer is gonna go into this um, second tier. Um, but that would be people like, the judge and the um, ECS attorney and um, their parents attorney. All these people have a say about this child's life, but they may never see. So there you go. There is eight sets of people in this first tier, eight sets in this second and three out here. So what is that? Let me do quick math. 19 people, 19 people um, or groups of people because obviously teachers, you could have more than one teacher. Um, doctors, it's possible that a foster child needs a specialist or things like that. So I um, hope that this is helpful. I hope this was interesting. Um, I know that I probably forget some groups of people. So if you are a foster parent and you're like, oh my goodness, you forgot this person, please leave it below in the comments. Um, but yeah, there, that's just a lot, a lot of people. And so just think about that child, um, you know, when they first come into care, it can be very, very overwhelming. Uh, there's been times when our um, foster child uh, will switch the names of the CASA and the caseworker and just get even confused because, you know, I'm talking with them often, but she's really only seeing them um, once a month. So it's not, it's very understandable. There's a lot of names, a lot of people. I remember even the first like month, our foster daughter was like, what's your name again? What's your name? And I'm like, I'm Lisa. And I thought she was kidding and just like trying to be funny, um, especially like when it was like week three, but I don't think she was. It was just overwhelming. And you know, it's very possible that they have come from other foster families. So that was the case with ours. They were with a different foster family first, and then they came to us. And so that's just a lot of names at once. Be gracious, uh, be understanding, and yeah, there you go. Anything else you wanna add, Peter, to, to, to wrap that up? I mean, yeah. Lots of people loving and caring for the kids. Yes, that is the thing. And when I say um, you take a, some village, now you see what they're talking about. Yes, that is very true. And it definitely takes a village. And um, we are happy to be one part of the village. Um, so thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you are not already and we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.